to another episode of my Monday Style Sessions. So today we're going to be talking, and whole week we're going to be talking about travel. And uh, we're going to be talking about that on YouTube. I've got a travel clusters video coming out tomorrow. So six travel clusters for six different types of trips. So that should be fun. And then on Friday, I'm going to show you how I pack and what I would pack for a trip. So two different videos coming up this week. Definitely check those out. But today I want to talk about general travel style tips. Now these are not tips on how to pack or how to get things into your suitcase. These are tips on looking your best when you're away. I think that that's really important and I think it's something that we underestimate a lot because we think, you know, and it does, you know, travel has to be practical. Your clothes have to be practical. They have to work for where you're going. They have to check all of those boxes. But there's an added level of confidence and of joy that you get from feeling your best when you're not at home. So I'm going to share some trip, some tips for your trips, some tips on looking your best when you're traveling. So the first tip is to to uh, pack your best clothes. So this is something that comes up a lot. A lot of my clients have, have, you know, especially if you're going on kind of an adventure trip, have said, well, I'm just going to pack the things I don't mind getting ruined. And I don't think that that's a good strategy. I think it's really important shoes for various activities and outfits. Okay, thanks, Kathy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. Um, I think it's very important to look and feel your best when you're away from home. You're already out of your element. You're already out of your element. You already feel maybe a little bit off. You feel a little uncertain of certain things. Um, your schedule is thrown off, all of those things. You want to bring the clothes that are instant confidence boosters. So you want to pack that dress that makes you look and feel beautiful the second you put it on. You want the clothes that are the no-brainer confidence boosters. And so rather than pretending that you have this travel alter ego that is just going to wear, I'm only going to wear silk and cashmere when I'm gone, or I'm only, I'm, I'm suddenly very athletic and I'm just going to pack athleisure, even though I never wear athleisure in my regular life. You really want to look at your, your personal style and bring that with you on the trip. You want to feel like an elevated version of yourself. So you don't want to feel like yourself on a Tuesday afternoon when you're going to the grocery store if you don't normally dress for that, but you want to feel like yourself in the best possible way. So don't pretend that you're the type of person who wears dresses all the time if you don't wear dresses all the time. And then don't take them on a trip and get yourself stuck with wearing items that never felt like you to begin with. So you really want, I mean, I think that that personal style work is so important, but knowing what you actually reach for and what you actually love to wear is even more important when you're working with a limited wardrobe. Now you want to decide whether you're a minimalist or a maximalist. I talked about this with closets and it's true with, with travel as well. Are you the type of person like me who likes to have options when you're on the road or are you the type of person who wants to be a carry-on only person? If you're a carry-on only person, hats off to you. You're going to have to be a lot more organized and a lot more focused when it comes to your color palette. So you want to decide and, and be realistic about how much you want to take on a trip without overpacking. So how do you do that? How do you express your best style, take your best outfits with you, feel like yourself when you're gone without overpacking? So I'm going to give you a couple of tri uh, tips on how to do that. The first is to really research your destination. It's really important to not look like a tourist when you're abroad. It's really important from a variety of perspectives, from a sensitivity perspective, like a, an awareness perspective of the di different culture that you're entering. You know, we're entering their culture, and so I think it's really important to honor that. But also from a safety perspective, you don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. You don't want to wear an I love Paris hat in Paris, right? Like you, you, you don't want to draw undue attention to yourself, and you don't want to put yourself or your, your family or your group in any kind of, 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 of precarious situation because it looks like you just don't, don't fit in at all. So you want your clothes to be, to be con like, uh, to fit into where you're going. You want them to look like you belong where you're at. So you're going to dress very differently for a trip to the tropics than you are going to be, than you are for a trip to a big city, than you are for a trip to the south of France. Those are going to require different wardrobes. So you really want to look at um, where you're going and what the people wear when they go there. There is, uh, who, who, I mean, who live there. There is no shortage of information online about what people wear in Japan and what people wear in Germany and what people wear in wherever you're going, like, you know, 
St. Bart's, uh, wherever you're going, you'll find a video or a resource that says, this is what people wear. This is what the locals wear. And so find the versions from your outfits that are really going to get you there um, from your wardrobe. That does not mean going out and reinventing your style and, and, and pulling a different wardrobe. It means that you're going to find the pieces that you already own that, that work for that location. So rather than the athleisure and the Nikes maybe that you wear on a daily basis, maybe you're going to Europe and you're going to pull the, the clothes that you would wear to church or to a date night. So it's just going to be things that you already have. I don't believe in completely um, buying a whole new travel wardrobe unless you literally don't have, you know, unless you've done a major purge and you have no clothes. And I have not met anybody who really falls into that category. So um, thank you, Marnie. So really, you want to look at the, the destination and dress accordingly. Also, do your research because you're going to be surprised by some of the rules that, that are out there. Like, for example, I just discovered that you can't wear heels to the Greek ancient monuments. Who knew that? I would have tried to pack my heels. Just kidding. I did actually try to pack wedges for a trip to the pyramids when my husband and I were, were early on in our relationship and he vetoed that. <laughs> Because we were going to be doing like some, you know, climbing and some rugged terrain. So, but who knew that that was against the rules that you cannot wear heels to the Parthenon or whatever? I didn't know that. So do your research before you go so that you're not stuck um, wearing um, something that will forbid you from going into a destination. Um, for example, if you are um, going to a, a, a religious site like a, a church or a cathedral or something there might be requirements about maybe having bare arms or so you just want to know so that you don't have any little snags like that but you want to pack the clothes that make you look and feel your best on a trip do not pack clothes for an imaginary alter ego who works out all the time or dresses up all the time or whatever pack your favorite clothes because they're going to be instant confidence boosters okay enough about that um, I can go on and on about that. The second tip I want to say is that accessories are critical. Accessories are critical. So what you, the, the, the key to not getting bored of your travel wardrobe, especially if you are on the minimalist side when it comes to packing, if you're packing a more minimal travel wardrobe, you're packing a lot of essentials, you're packing a lot of neutrals. Um, I did this when I went to uh, Europe last summer when I went to Scotland. I packed essentials, I packed a lot of neutrals, but then I packed some really cool accessories, a pair of hot pink rain boots, um, and I'm going to include jackets in the list of accessories, a red um, trench coat. I packed some fun statement pieces that elevated the essential pieces. So you want to make sure that your accessories are going to take your clothes up to the next level and give you that variety and that interest and that style and make your essentials or your basic pieces feel like they suit your personal style and not that you're just like wearing a black t-shirt and black jeans on repeat. Nobody wants that look. Like that's going to get boring after a while and you're going to be wishing that you had packed a little more variety. The next tip is to check your itinerary. So you want to look at what you're doing and where you're going specifically, and you want to pack accordingly. So there's always outliers on most trips, you know, like there's an occasion where you're going to dress up the most, and there's going to be an occasion where you dress down the most, right? Maybe you are going to a fancy dinner, but you're also hiking when you're there. So you want to make sure you have an outfit for the hiking and an outfit for the fancy dinner. You want to check those, those two outliers, and then you want to look at your daily schedule and you want to decide what you're going to wear every single day. Yes, this is extra, but it is important. At the very least, you want to assign dress codes to those specific days. So this is a sightseeing day. This is a, um, an outdoor adventure day. This is a fancy dinner day. And you want to assign outfits to those specific days. So here's my fancy dinner outfit. Here's my outdoor adventure outfit. Here is my Here are my three sightseeing outfits that I can rotate. Um, check your itinerary and make sure that you have an outfit in mind for each of those activities. More than that, not just an outfit in mind, but my suggestion is to create outfits, photograph the outfits, and then designate those outfits for specific dates. So you want to pack in outfits, not in separates. That said, you know, I believe in creating a travel cluster. A cluster is an uh, assortment of six to seven pieces that mix and match. Three tops, two bottoms, a jacket, and possibly a dress or jumpsuit. You want to create a cluster for travel, then you want to create outfits for those clusters, and then you want to take those outfits and you want to assign them to specific dates. So it's three steps. Create a cluster 
everything mixes and matches in the cluster, so you're going to have multiple combinations. Then you're going to create outfits with those clusters. Then you're going to assign those outfits to specific days. So you may create, say, three sightseeing outfits and realize that you have five sightseeing days. So if you're going to create just those three sightseeing outfits, you're going to assign those outfits, the three outfits, to the five different days. So you're going to rewear a couple of items. So if you, if you really think in terms of, of, of a cluster first and then creating outfits, you're not going to have a bunch of extra pieces that you do not wear. Be really intentional about what you're taking. You don't want to overpack, but you want to take the pieces you want to take. So if you know you don't wear something at home, you're not going to wear it when you're not at home. If you know you're not going to, you don't wear something because it's fussy or annoying or not comfortable when you're at, you know, the easiest situation possible, which is dressing out of your own closet, then you know you're not going to wear it when it's at the bottom of your suitcase and it's going to end up back home unworn, right? And you're going to have wasted that space. And maybe that opportunity to buy something new at your destination, right? So those three steps, uh, create a cluster, create the outfits, photograph the outfits that you've created and then designate those outfits to a specific day. I get into that a little bit more in my videos. I have clusters tomorrow. I've got more packing tips on Friday. Um, and then finally, I want to encourage you to um, make sure that you are your chicest version of yourself when you're abroad. So you want to, to really look at what are my current favorite clothes and can I take those clothes with me on this trip? Do they work for me on this trip? Um, what fabrics do I want to take with me on this trip? What um, combinations can I make on this trip? Because you want to look and feel your best. This is why I don't understand it when people are like, well, I'm only taking one and a half items on this trip and I'm just going to mix and match those one and a half items into 94 outfits. I don't think that that's realistic. I also don't think that you need a completely new travel wardrobe or travel specific pieces. That said, in tomorrow's video, I did mention a couple of travel specific pieces because I think if you're a very frequent, frequent traveler or you're an adventure traveler, then travel specific pieces can have a place but recognize that any brand from whether you buy it at Walmart or whether you buy it at Anatomy, um, all of those stores have performance fabrics and all travel fabrics are really, for the most part, are performance fabrics. So consider leveling up in terms of the quality of the pieces that you bring with you um, because those are going to be pieces that are going to have to be workhorse pieces, right? You're going to wear them again and again, so you want them to be um, the, really good quality and to hold up on the trip and to not like instantly wrinkle or instantly smell, right? So level up in terms of your accessories. So let's recap, um, I, let me, and I'm gonna answer a couple of questions too. Um, shoes for various activities and outfits. Okay, I discussed this in this week's videos, but I go with the rule of threes with shoes. I like to have a fashion sneaker, a pair of flats, and a pair of heels. Um, if you can check a neutral box and a metallic box in these those other two shoes, you're going to have your bases covered. So a white fashion sneaker, I think, is a, a game changer and is something that everybody should have in their wardrobe. I will, right after this video, I will post the link to my favorite, my current favorite uh, fashion sneaker. Um, which is from All Birds. I'll, I'll share that link in the comments right after this video. But I think a fashion sneaker is an essential item. You're going to see them now worn. Now, I'm not talking about a big bulky Nike, although I know that that's a, a style choice as well. But I'm talking about like a white, um, simple fashion sneaker. It can be leather, it can be canvas, it can be wool like my All Birds. But you want a, like a sleek one that goes with dresses, it goes with outfits, it doesn't pull things down. You will see those worn even in Europe. Um, and uh, they, they work with dresses, they work with more casual outfits. Um, then I think you need a pair of flats. Um, a, a pair of flats that's comfortable enough to walk around in, but stylish enough to go to dinner in. So I recommend that with the flats and then the dressier version of your shoe. So you're going to have two other flats besides a fashion sneaker. You're going to have a dressier shoe and you're going to have um, a flat. Those two shoes, you want one to be a neutral and one to be a metallic. A metallic goes with everything and it doesn't drag your outfit down. Um, then the neutral, I believe, should be a light to um, medium neutral. Black can often just be 
heavy on outfits, especially in the summer, and can kind of drag your outfits down. And the winter black, I think, works really well, but in the summer, I would go for a lighter neutral or like that cognac brown that I talk about all the time. I think those are the great, a great color choices to have for shoes. So you want a metallic, you want the white sneaker, and then you want a light to medium neutral for your shoes. You want a, the fashion sneaker, you want the flat, and then you want like a dressier shoe, maybe a little mule, maybe a tiny little block heel, a sandal, whatever your dressy version of a shoe is. Um, I, if I were going to Europe right now, I would take a beautiful pair of slide sandals as my flat or a ballet flat. I would take an espadrille or um, a block heeled sandal as my heel, and then I would take a fashion sneaker. So those would be my three rule of threes when it comes to shoes. Um, level up your accessories. You want your accessories on any trip to be beautiful without being um, so statement -y, especially like if you're going to a, a more subdued place and a more elegant place like like Europe you want beautiful elegant polished accessories but you don't want them to scream look at me um, whereas if you're going to a place like the tropics or whatever you can have a little bit more fun and a little bit more whimsy in your accessories level up those accessories make sure that you have a beautiful pair of earrings make sure that you're wearing you know a, a jewelry a necklace earrings um, you know a bracelet like level up those those pieces and um, have fun with a, an opportunity to dress for a different place. I live in a small, casual beach town. Nothing is more fun than dressing up for a different place and a different um, climate and getting to wear some of the pieces that, I, that are not necessarily going to make it into my regular rotation on a given weekday in my regular life. So enjoy the fantasy aspect of travel. Um, and one of the reasons I love the cluster concept for travel is that it allows you to have more options with fewer items. Items. And I think that's something we're all looking for. If you are truly a minimalist, you can take one one cluster and all solid neutrals and you can be gone for six months. <laughs> but if you, like me, like to have options, then a couple of clusters for your trip will give you lots of options without overpacking. And that's the key. Um, as, a, as a founding member of Overpackers Anonymous, I can tell you it is exhausting to have too much stuff with you that you don't end up using. You want that balance between having enough and having options and looking and feeling your stylish best, but not having so much that you your trip becomes about lugging stuff. You don't want your trip to become about lugging stuff with you. So I hope that you enjoyed this and got some um, tips for your next travel destination. Let me know in the comments where you're going. Uh, like I said, I will share my favorite Allbirds fashion sneakers with you and love you guys. I will see you all week long in the Facebook group and on YouTube as we continue our conversation about travel. Also, share in the comments what your favorite go-to travel shoes are. I'm going to, disclaimer, if you don't already know me, shoes should be cute and comfortable. Cute and comfortable. So let's, let's level up and try to find travel shoes that are cute and comfortable. Love you guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye.